Hi there, this is Susie Beck again and today she is going to show you how to subdivide a very lovely fern here in front of me which is called um, Nephrolipsis smithii or simply lace fern. So as you can see, this particular fern has had its days, meaning it's been hanging for nearly over two years. So what I had to do, um, I had decided that it is no longer green, luscious look about it. As you can see, it's really turning into a brown mess. Although it looks healthy, it is growing, as you can see, that, you know, but it's not healthy simply because all the nutrition, all the goodness has been taken up by this particular fern and now I have to renew or update or find, refresh the soil of this particular plant. So to do that, to be able to do that, I am going to take it out from its hanging thing so I could go step by step showing you what I do when my ferns outgrow their pots or outgrow their life, which is more than two to three years, they do need separating. So don't hesitate to do that. It is one of the best things you can do. We are still in winter. Uh, well, not many weeks to go before we come into spring. It's not that late to actually um, separate them or subdivide them. So I'm just going to very quickly show you what I'm going to do. Take it, especially take it out of this hanging basket. I mean, hanging um, pot. And as you can see, it's a lot of brownie bits at the bottom. And you can't really do much till you take it all out of its container and stuff and be able to do what you need to do. So let's remove all this. And I really got to assess it because I am trying to do this from like not exactly knowing what I'll be facing. So I'm just showing what I would be doing in, in if it, if it wasn't a video. So um, I just go and look and obviously as you can see inside is all browning and all this is all browning actually needs a jolly good cut. The pot is really moist so it's not that as if it's browning just because it's not it, the, the moisture is not enough there. It's just because all the goodness has been taken up by this particular plant. So I'm just going to remove this soil, just put it there. It's not root bounded either, I don't, I don't think it is, but then again it is a surface feeder. So all the roots generally is about two inches deep. So that's all the root system that it actually requires. So mainly the top part of the soil gets used and the bottom as you can see it's falling apart you will see where the root system how far it goes well i think this is it this is as far as the root system is about two inches and these are just the soil at the bottom i'm just going to remove all of it anyway and what kind of soil i'll be using it will include anything that is a moisture containing um, ingredients or products like vermiculite will be one of them that I'll be using, um, sphagnum moss that I'll be using and a very good potting soil which would be spots that I generally use and also um, yates which I'll be using yates because I have got a bag of yates. So what I'm going to do now is literally assess the plant and how I'm going to subdivide it without hurting the plant. There's lots of new growth I can see, so it's, it's a good idea to subdivide it and, and see what's happening. See if I can use this little knife to subdivide. It's not hard because its rooting system is very soft and tender, like its leaves. So it's nothing really that we could hurt this plant.
Now, I'm not sure whether I should really chuck it all off, which I'm still assessing what I need to do, and then start off again. That is probably the best idea. So never hesitate actually to chop it all off. It's, it will grow back and I will very shortly show you the last maiden hair fan, if you remember I did, how well they are doing once I chop it all off. So you can literally get to see that. See all these new shoots are coming. So it will just, you know, inside it, here's some nice new ones that is coming. So in springtime it will just pop up. So I don't know whether I should actually cut it into half again, which I just might do because I will get four plants out of this, you see. So that's another thing you can do is to cut it like that. Okay, so I've got two here and do the same as this one. And chop it off. I've had this fern looking luscious and green till now. So I have been looking at it and seeing it is going brown and needing repotting. So I thought maybe today is a good day to do it while I'm free. Uh, and I haven't been really free for the last couple of months. I have had so many things, growings and happenings, and I have been busy. So that's the reason why I haven't actually been able to make so many videos. But now on, I should be able to and of course you're getting into spring there, there's a lot more to show anyway so here are my four bits and the thing the soil I'm gonna use and the pot I'm gonna use this time I won't be using terracotta pot because I find fern I have to water it nearly every day as you can see so just to avoid that I'll be using plastic ones this time around and a sort of smaller smaller one same size as that actually and not so deep even though i haven't got something um the length not as long should be up to up to here when you plant them up to say three inches in height that's what you need anything long as you can see it's a waste because birds normally are surface feeders so they like to feed on the top on the top surface so all this soil I must remove. Now for the soil, of course I need another pot, which doesn't matter, I will show you how what I'm going to do with the first one anyway. And I am going to use vermiculite, because that's a good wetting agent and it keeps moisture, it keeps moisture in, it retains the moisture for the ferns. And ferns just love, especially this particular fern, just love amount of moisture it can get and it will save me watering all the time as well say every fourth or fifth day i mean normally i have to water in winter every five days in summer every second or third day that's how often it needs water most of my foods and this is the vermiculite and i'm going to use yates uh, potting mix which also includes dynamic lifter so probably three of these two and three and one of hectare and succulent mix this is just to also helps Drain it. And I have got salt sphagnum moss, which I will mix it all in. And wetting agent. I will use uh, put my glove on so that I can get some wetting agent out. So about uh, 10 grams or something like that that amount of soy so about 10 grams a little bit more i just guess you know i mean three or four potfuls of soil to that amount of wetting agent and it's got sphagnum moss 
and it has also got um, vermiculite. So I'm going to mix all in. Although I also feel that this type of soil also needs airing, so I put some perlite as well because you don't want the soil to end up gooey either. You want a bit of air in the soil too. So I just use a bit of perlite. I sort of assess the situation as I go, you know, whether I need to use perlite or vermiculite or not because they are on the costly side, so I try to avoid as often as I can. So, because I'm also feeling the soil tight, and then I decide whether I need to use perlite or not. In this case I do, even though hectare and succulent is also a good um, material or, or the product you have helps drainage of the water it doesn't hold but it helps drainage whereas perlite will hold water for the roots so once the perlite the, the roots have used the water and that's where they, they tend to have a lot of aeration for the roots whereas vermiculite actually just absorbs as much water as it can and it keeps it it's always wet when you collect if you touch it in the soil. So there we go. So that's the explanation of those two items that I've used. Now, now the soil is really good. I'm going to pop this in. And just see how this is going. This is how little bit I'm going to plant. And then I'll show you. I'll take more soil off. Just want as far as because I don't really want the other soil stuck onto it because as you know it is a surface feeder and you don't want the old soil wanting the old, old soil again you take as much old soil as you can so this is how it looks and I'm just going to sit it on the top just like that as you can see and then fill it up. And literally soak it with water. You can actually keep this soaked overnight in the basin and take it out in the morning. It will do no harm. And that's what I'll be doing. I'll be taking all four, filling the basin with water and letting it soak in there. This one done. Here's the second one. Just take as much soil as I can. Because this is no good. This is the old soil. I might just give it a bit more haircut. Actually, it might go like that. I was going to save some green ones, but it's not worth it really because it will come back again anyway. Just take as much soil as you can and just leave it on the top like that as I have set it and then fill it up with soil. It's easy because I love playing with them. Um, ferns because they're so easy to actually come up new fronds when it comes up it's just beautiful to watch how it unfurls and how the um, little new leaves come up and stuff like that it's really lovely so I've planted two of them show them that one there that's two and you know, um, this is what I'm going to do with the other two. Exactly what I've done with these two. Take all this soil out and plant. Now, I will be back to you shortly and 
Ripon, another sperm that actually requires repotting. See you soon. Well, I'm back again and trying to show you what to do once you have repotted them. As you can see, I have repotted all four while I was away. Oh, oh on, you know, um, before you could video it. So I've sort of speeded up the process a bit later, really. So now what I'm doing is um, this particular one, the white stuff here, I have used Epsom salt to keep my ferns green. So I use a half a teaspoonful in every pot. That's what I have done. And then when you repot it for about six to one year, feed it with all purpose soluble fertilizer. And this is the product of Yates that I use, but you can also use Osmocoat or um, sea soil, help stuff, um, seaweed stuff, organic stuff, or you can make your own soluble organic fertilizer out of organic material out outdoors, whatever you can find. Anything is good. So, but me, I just buy this because it's easier, and you use a teaspoonful um, per liter. So that's what I do. And what I do next is literally in a sink. Over here, I've got a bowl, sort of acts like a sink. You put it all four of them, or whatever amount you, many you've got, and you fill it up the sink and let it soak. Let it soak as much as it can without wetting everything else. Sorry about that, I'm a little bit too fast, but um, just soak it, really good soak. And leave it overnight. A good thing is fill up the sink, let it sit, and let it soak overnight. And in the morning, you take it out, drain it, and put it away, and where you should be putting is under a, a, a shady area where it's... Uh, uh, not direct sunlight, but a well littered area, as in well uh, littered place inside your house, perhaps uh, uh, near the windowsill where it doesn't get sunlight, because this sort of ferns just hate direct sunlight. It likes that shady area, depot light, or um, very fine lighting, doesn't like heat or anything like that, loves um, temperature between 18 to 25 degrees to survive. That's the temperature range it's like. It also likes humidity, so make sure you provide the humidity that it needs. But we'll talk about that later. Now, I will leave that to soak overnight in the sink, in this case, in a bowl. See you later. Thanks for watching my video. Bye for now.